So we've been talking about surveillance screening or screening people who may have ha who may have the virus, but they're not showing any symptoms uh, before reopening the country. A study in the New England Journal of Medicine describes what that might look like. To talk about the study, Nine Health expert Dr. Pyle Coley joins us this morning. Dr. Coley, good morning. Let's talk about this study. It looked at surveillance testing and targeted testing. Can you explain what that is? Uh, good morning, Natasha. So, you know, testing we've been talking about for a long time, and if it finally does come to our country, this is what it would look like. So surveillance testing, as you said, is really testing people who have no symptoms or mild symptoms, really looking in the general population for whether or not somebody may have a virus or have been infected with the virus and not realize it. And targeted testing is really targeting those high risk people. So someone who's either traveled to a place that has the virus, has had a direct exposure, or has had a combination of symptoms, the classic symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, muscle aches. And by looking at these two groups, we really identify, uh, we really get a good lay of the land, so to speak. So we understand exactly how the virus is behaving both in people who've been exposed and in the community in general. So what were the results of the study? Very interesting results, actually. So first, let's talk about targeted testing. You know, as expected, the group that had targeted testing um, had about a one in eight rate of positivity. So about 13% of people were positive, which is pretty high, which we would expect because those people either had symptoms or had exposures. But the results of the surveillance testing were even more interesting, and that showed a 0.8% positivity rate. So almost 1% of people that had no symptoms or mild symptoms and didn't know it were positive. In fact, when you ask people in the study, 43% of them said they don't recall having any symptoms at all. We also saw that no kids under 10 in the surveillance testing group had infection. And that, again, goes back to that question of kids being relatively protected from this virus, especially young kids. And then finally, we saw another pattern, which has been emerging also, is that more males than females tested positive in the surveillance group. This also happened in the targeted testing group. So really, there seems to be something about gender that does seem to confer a slightly higher risk for men. Yeah, we had talked about that a while ago. It's really interesting how much we're learning every day about this virus. Uh, it's evolving every day. So how does this study help us better understand the virus? So, uh, Natasha, I think the study really lays the roadmap for what needs to happen because surveillance testing needs to happen in a widespread fashion all across the world for us to really open up the country. And what the study shows us is a number of things. Number one, there are people out there, about one out of 100, who are walking around with 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 immunity to this infection without realizing it. It shows us the behavior of the virus. So it shows us that kids and females tend to be relatively protected. Mm -hmm. And then finally, what it also showed us was that the genetic behavior was slightly different in, in the community spread in the people who had it without realizing it than it was in the targeted population. So if you look at the genetics of the virus, there was slight differences between the ones that had direct exposure and the ones that were just spreading in the community. So we learned so much about the biology of the virus by doing this kind of widespread testing. But the take home message really is the same. Widespread testing, test broadly, and this kind of surveillance testing is the key to opening up the economy. Yeah, and the only really way that we can truly understand the behavior of this virus, um, because there's still so much unknown. Dr. Coley, thank you so much for joining us. Uh